we up to today? We're going to put our water tanks in, or at least make a start, but we're going to have to go to the steel place first, pick up some angle steel and some flat bar to make our tank frames. And there now, and we'll go get that and start welding. I don't think we're actually going to get the tanks in today, but we're going to get them welded up and ready to go. For the tanks we're putting in the van, we've got four tanks that we're going to use. We've got three freshwater tanks. This one down here is going to go between the chassis rails underneath where the passenger sliding door is at the back. This one's going inside and this one's going behind the diff. Down there we've got our grey water tank that's going behind the driver under the sliding door at the rear there. In total we've got about 200 litres of fresh water and around 50 litres of grey water. So all our tanks came from Atlas Tanks on the sunny coast. They've got a whole range of different tanks that fit all sorts of different vans from sprinters to transits and all that sort of thing. And they've got set combinations as well that you can get. Usually it's two to three tanks and they fit in specific spots under the van. Originally we were just going to have three tanks and have them all mounted underneath. But we've ended up with the four and one of them's now going inside which is this bigger one. It's just unfortunate with the van that we've got with the dual rear sliding doors so the extra door behind the driver. We lost a lot of volume, so we've had to get an extra tank. And also because we've got the dual rear wheels on the van, we lost space behind the diff, so we lost a bit of storage there. So that's kind of why we've ended up with the tanks we have. We've used one of the set tanks from Atlas, that one's mirrored there, and then these are two of their just standard tanks for other uses. So the plan with this is to make up some frames out of steel and mount those up under the chassis and bolt them in place. So for the frames themselves, I'm going to make them out of 40 by 5 mil angle. I've also got some 32 by 5 mil flat bar to use as some bracing. We're essentially just going to make a frame to go around and support each of the tanks and then bolt those up into place. So I've got a friend who's a structural engineer and he did actually model these designs for me in a structural program. This was on my bucks after a couple of Amber refreshments. He has since checked it again and also we thought the tanks were going to be twice the size that they were for the largest one. So there's a bit of factor safety in there. So I'm fairly confident in the design in this. I'm going to cut everything with this cheapo cutoff saw I've got. Then I'm going to weld it up with my little MIG setup gasless. It's a little Uni MIG Viper 120. If you're watching this, you've got to do the same thing. You've always wanted to weld, but you don't know where to start. A little MIG like that set up gasless, super easy. Basically just plug it in and pretty much just start welding. It's pretty much like a hot glue gun. Watch a few videos on YouTube and bit of practice on some scrap metal and you'll be fine. Yeah, if you're not interested in welding, I think this is something you could get fabbed up pretty easily by like a local welding shop or something like that. So I've welded up all the frames for all the tanks and now I'm just working out where the outlets are going and I'm going to notch those out so the tanks can drop down into the frame.
Okay, so we've got the tank sitting just in place with the jack there, just to work out how we're gonna attach it up under the van to the chassis rail. So we're just down here to take some measurements. You can see this is the piece I cut out before. And then I reinforced this bit because I weakened it by cutting that bit out. I reinforced it with a piece of five mil plate. So effectively we've got a 10 mil plate along there. So it's quite solid. But yeah, we're just taking some measurements now and just working out how the supports are gonna hold the tank frame in place. So the plan to attach our water tank frames is to use some M10 bolts and some nut certs or riv nuts. So I've had the frame up under the van, just test fitted where it's gonna go. And we're now gonna drill out the mounting holes where the bolts will go through. Then we're gonna drill out some holes as well under the van where we're gonna put the nut certs, just making sure we've got a really solid spot to put that for a solid connection. And these step bits are just great if you're drilling steel, especially this is fairly thick, like five mil, really good for that. So yeah, we're gonna drill these out and then place it up under there and then drill pilot holes for the nut certs and then drill those out as well. All right, we've got this rear tank sitting where we want it. It does look kind of low, but you can see it's sitting above the diff over there. So we've got a bit of clearance. We've got it sitting nicely here flush up there where we want it and we're just going to drill out these three holes. Well so far this has been one of the most unpleasant things we've done on the van. Laying there on your back with the drill up in the air and this thing's spitting out like hot molten metal as it drills through so i'm going to up the ppe game we're going to get under there and finish drilling the rest of these holes Alrighty, so now we're going to put the nut certs or the rib nuts in so the ones i've got are m10 and they're rated for 21.6 kilonewton pull out force so that's around 2200 kilos um, of weight to pull it out for each one so yeah we're going to use the rib nut gun and put those up underneath essentially you open up the handle put the right thread into the gun and tighten it down to the right spot and then basically you push it up into the hole and squeeze it and it pulls out and basically pulls it tight into the hole. So then with that in place you can just use your M10 bolts, and tighten those up, obviously with the frame in place. Alrighty, so everything's now done under the van, ready for us to mount the tank brackets up under there. I've also finished welding up the supports for the last tank bracket and welded on the supports on the rest because they were just tacked in place. And honestly, this has really tested me, it's tested my patience. It's been really physically tough being under the van, lifting those tanks up and down. And yeah, I'm just feeling done. It's been a long day. Um, but yeah, it's a lot lifting them up and down and trying to tweak them, get them into position. Um, still need to make some sort of support to go over the top to hold them in place, but that should hopefully be fairly straightforward. But yeah, for today, I'm done. Welcome back to underneath our van. So at the moment I've just got the tank frame sitting in its place without the tank and I'm just working out the clearance that I've got because I did leave a little bit of clearance to the chassis above. And that way I can measure the tank as well and just work out because I've got some foam padding that I'm going to attach to the underside to secure the tank in from the top when it's mainly when it's empty and if it bounces just to keep it nice and secure there. So for the cushioning above the tanks, I've got some of these gym floor mats that I'm going to cut into some strips and attach that up under the chassis. 
and that's just going to help support the tank when it's empty and it bounces around. So we fitted the tank up under there as a bit of a test fit after we put that foam bracing in and it was fitting there really snugly. And while we had it under there as well, I just worked out the positioning for our tank senders. So I've got three of these, they're from RV Electronics and I've got a little uh, gauge as well. You push the button essentially and it will tell you what level the tank is. So I got that with the three originally when we were only planning to have three tanks. We've now got four, so the one that's in the back of the van won't have a gauge but the way I'm gonna set it up, that's gonna sort of be an auxiliary tank. So we'll use the two freshwater tanks underneath. They're roughly 100 litres. The one inside's roughly 100 litres. If we fully use the two underneath, I'll be able to turn a tap inside and it'll drain down to those. So I will know what water level we're sitting at. And the third one will go in the gray water as well. So this is a little battery unit. It's a 12 volt battery though, like a small battery. What I'm planning to do is take the back off it and I've run a cable from our 12 volt fuse block and I'm gonna just hardwire it in so I don't have to worry about changing the battery. But what we've gotta do now is drill a hole in the side of the tank and put the sender unit in and then it tightens down and seals. So there's a few little instructions about where you're supposed to put it in terms of the sides of the tank and how far up the tank. And then you put this in, it's got a few little electrodes on there that obviously indicate the water level in there. Put that in, tighten it up, and then run the cord. And I'm planning to put this on the side of the shower, so in the sort of above the kitchen tile area. Next to the kitchen bench, we'll have our little gauge. But yeah, we're gonna drill this out now. 22 mil hole in there. I'm gonna get Brooke to hold a vacuum on there as well to try and minimize as much plastic going down into the tank, and then we'll give it a flush as well. We're now ready to put the tank into its frame and then the sender in and up under the van. And before I do that, I'm gonna put a bead of sicker around the inside of the frame. Not so much to stick it down, but just to give it a bit of a cushion, if you will, um, and a bit of separation from the frame itself. So yeah, we're gonna put that in. And I'm also really pleased with how these frames turned out. You might notice as well here, I've got quite a few holes and I specified what size and where I wanted everything and when I was doing that I wasn't 100% sure how I was going to do the plumbing so I plugged up that one and it was just if I wanted to have extra um, bead lines coming in from that upper tank so I'm going to try and run them off the same line from the upper tank and the fill point just using some T's and taps but I've got those other holes there if I do need them. One thing we didn't talk about with this tank was because we've got the dual rear wheel version of the Sprinter, which we got for the extra weight, the exhaust sits further over normally. So it normally sort of comes through where this tank is. So we had to have the exhaust moved. So we took the van to an exhaust shop and they had it moved and it comes out the side now. There was a few requirements, I believe, around where that had to discharge in relation to windows and doors and things like that. So certain clearances, but yeah, the exhaust had to be moved, which was a little bit annoying. Um, and I think the standard tanks that Atlas do for the 
single wheel versions probably don't have that problem. I'm not gonna get too excited, but I just want to show you how you're feeling. I'm so pleased, like that's just sitting there so nicely. Look how like snug that tank's sitting there. The bolts look really good. Yeah. I'm pretty stoked to be honest. Now he's gotta rinse and repeat and do that two more times. We're gonna do the same thing for the two side tanks as we did for the rear tank. So I'm not gonna show all that in detail, but I thought I'd just show these frames if anyone is interested and just where I had the mounting points and things like that. So this frame is on the passenger side, that frame goes on the other side. So this mount and this mount on this one go into the chassis. So this long boy here comes up to the floor. And the reason for that is because the fuel tanks on this side, I couldn't get a chassis mount for this one, I would have preferred to, but yeah, it's ended up coming up through the floor. So hopefully it'll avoid the kitchen. And then that one comes up in under the step. On the opposite side, I've got chassis mount, chassis mount, chassis mount, and the same step mount as well. And because there's no fuel tank, I didn't have a problem getting another chassis mount on this side. So if anyone's interested in where my mounting points are, hope that helps someone. So I'm putting on some of the plumbing fittings on the tanks now where they're going to be up and inaccessible. So I'm putting some elbows on. This is for the grey water tank at the moment. And for these I've got one inch uh, inlets. I would have liked one and a half inch because that's going to be where the shower, the shower will drain into one of these and the sink into the other. Considering the low flow rate that's going to be coming through, especially from the shower, I think this is going to work fine and it's just with the space we had that's what i had to go to make it fit up under there and all the fittings i'm putting a thread seal tape on there as well so all these fittings on this tank are bspt so they're the british standard and they're the tapered thread so all the threads sort of vary For the grey water outlet, I've got a one and a half inch or 40 mil gating valve. So you can open it as little or as much as you want, which is handy depending how you want to release the grey water. So that's going on this one and a half inch poly nipple. And it's not as nice of a solution probably as I would have wanted with how I'm going to have the tap because I'm going to have to have it sort of sitting sort of like that just so that I can have these pointing down and around but just sort of got to work with the space that we've got so as you can see this is where the passenger side tank sits so this will be one of our freshwater tanks sitting up there really nicely it's also really firm in place sitting there and yeah mounted in here and here and i'll show you the mounts at the front as well so for the front of this tank the mounts we've put a bolt in through there with a large washer that i made and then the other one we couldn't get a mount into the chassis, so we've got a mount up through the floor for that one. So that's where the exhaust comes out now that we had it rerouted, as I've talked about before. And this is where the grey water tank's sitting on the driver's side, and you can see that's just mounted in there. It's really firm as well. And we've got our tap on there. May have to change a little bit here to get it a bit further away because of the, the fittings that are up here and bring it out the side somewhere where we can get a pipe onto it. But yeah, overall, really happy with how that's sitting. All the tanks are finally in, and now the last thing left to do is just run those cables for the electronic senders up to where we want them on the wall. So for that, I've found a few different grommets in the floor. So under the seat, there's one and there's one over there. And I'm just gonna utilize those and drill a hole in them and run the cable through that. 
And for the one at the back, I've drilled a hole in there. I'm going to run some 25 mil conduit because I also have to run some 12 volt cable down there for the water pump. This is the auxiliary tank. I haven't really talked too much about that or how I'm mounting it or anything because it's pretty simple. But yeah, that's sitting on this reinforced box, just secured it in place with some little braces there. And then I welded up a brace that will give another coat of paint and screw in just to keep it in place. And the purpose of this tank is to basically supplement the other two tanks. So this one equals the two fresh water tanks underneath. So when we drain those, we'll have the option to turn a tap here and fill those two tanks down there. But yeah, pretty simple install for this one really. Well, the tanks are finally in and this was by far the worst part of the build so far. It really tested my patience and it really took a lot of time to get it right and to get them in there as well. A lot of work laying on my back, holding the tanks up in there, trying to work things out, dimensions, the supports, things like that. But I'm really happy with the end result with it. Um, I'm really happy with the tanks from Atlas as well and the way that they fit up under there and sort of just been made to fit into those spaces. So yeah, that's one good side of this. The tank sender units as well. I think that'll be a really nice feature to have. Not super stoked on the fitment of those sender units into the tanks. I did test them, they're watertight. They seem to be staying there, but I feel like they could probably fit into the tank a little bit better and lock in a little bit nicer. Yeah, and as I mentioned, there's just a lot of work welding up those frames, cutting everything, measuring it. Welding up the frames as well, had some little challenges there as well. So when I welded up the first one, I should have tacked the frame into shape. And what I did was welded the first corner fully and then the next one. And by the time I got around to the fourth corner, even though I'd had it held square, by the time I got around to the last corner, there was a small gap there and I couldn't pull the frame together to weld it so I had to cut that and recut some pieces and then obviously the next time I just tacked it together which is what I should have done and they all worked from there. The cutoff saw was a really good thing to have for this. I don't think I would have wanted to do it at all with an angle grinder. It works really good for 90 degree cuts but when you go to do miter cuts it's not as accurate as I would like like down to the millimeter sort of thing. The blade is flexible as well, so if you don't get your cut exactly right and you want to shave like a couple of mil off, the blade will flex. And so it's really hard to get a nice straight cut if you're just trying to trim up a piece that you've just overcut. So yeah, a few little challenges there. Really happy overall with how the tanks are sitting. And the next thing to do with the tanks is plumb them in and all that, so we'll do a video on that. But yeah, happy to have this part of the build behind us. If it's helped you out at all, Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. All right, so I'm gonna quickly run through the tank details that we've used for anyone that's interested. So as I've mentioned, we ordered our tanks through Atlas. They do do a standard combination of tanks for a variety of different vehicles, including the sprinters, both the long wheelbase and the medium wheelbase. Unfortunately, because of the version that we had with the dual rear wheel and the dual sliding doors we weren't able to use a standard combination so we're only able to use one of those tanks which we then mirrored on the other side and then we used one of their other tanks behind the diff and a different one inside. I've also got a couple of tips for before you're ordering your tanks to help you size them and work out where fittings and things are going to go. Now I just sketched this up quickly in SketchUp just to help me work out where the fittings and things were going. Absolutely not necessary. If you're going through Atlas, they've just got drawings that you can use and you can mark on where your fittings and things need to go. So this is the first tank. This is the one that goes behind the diff. What I did was just climbed under the van with a tape measure, worked out the space that we had, and then I talked to Atlas and they were able to advise of one of their standard tanks that sort of fit into those dimensions. You can see here as well, I've marked in the inlets and outlets. Normally you'd have one inlet, one breather at the top and an outlet at the bottom. I've put in an extra inlet and outlet on each of the fresh water tanks that are undermounted just because I wasn't sure how I was going to plumb them. And then I've actually just plugged those holes now with a bung. This is the second tank that we've used. So this is actually the tank from a medium wheelbase and it's normally on the passenger's side. We've flipped it and used it on the other side. 
so my tip for planning your tanks is to make a profile of the tanks that you need out of cardboard to scale climb under the van and just see how they're going to fit have a tape measure there as well you can work out your lengths and the other thing is to get a couple of 90 degree fittings before as well so they're pretty cheap and the standard sizes are going to be either half inch inch or inch and a half so i just grabbed one each of those and then i knew the size of those and how much space they were going to take up on the end of the tank and then by having the template and the fittings i was able to work out how much length i was going to need and for this gray water tank you can see i've got an inlet on each end and that's just because on one end the shower comes in and then on the other end the sink comes in and because of that i ended up going for a smaller tank so as i mentioned the medium wheelbase tank is in our long wheelbase sprinter just because the fittings take up a bit of extra room and i also sized them down i would have preferred inch and a half inlets for the gray water but i've gone down to inch just on the inlets for space this then is our other freshwater tank that's undermounted so this goes behind the passenger's side again this was the medium wheelbase tank you see the fittings here it's the same tank as the gray water but mirrored and just different fittings as well and then this here is the last tank this is our auxiliary tank that's just going inside and that'll drain down into those two undermounted freshwater tanks Again, I just measured up a space that I had, chatted to Atlas, and they advised me of some of their standard combinations. So they can make tanks to any size or specifications. It's just going to cost more if you custom make them, which is what I was originally going to do. And then I ended up opting for just some of the standard tanks that they make that they just have molds for. So hopefully this helps you out if you're looking at your tank sizes and your fittings and different things like that.